All right, I'm Ryan. I'm back for my second video, and I actually ended up recording a whole video for this, and then my camera cut off because I ran out of storage, and it didn't end up saving the video, so now I have to redo the whole thing. But so I, my first video was Tunes Tag 2022, and I was really happy with uh, the feedback and the amount of views and comments I got on that video, and I I felt like this will be a good follow up. I'm gonna be showing my recent finds for probably about the past couple months. So I don't have everything in here, but I do have a decent decent portion. So I'm just gonna start right out with Tender Moments by McCoy Tyner. This is something that I've been streaming on Spotify. Not a lot, but it's not it's not also something I wanted on a, on vinyl too much, but I ended up getting a good deal on it. And I'm glad I did because I love this record. Lee Morgan and Joe Henderson's on here. And James Spaulding too. James Spaulding's on a few Freddie Hubbard albums that I just love, like stuff that I hold close to me. So I'm glad I got this. Hearing it on vinyl is defi definitely something that changes your mind on how you feel about an album. So this is one of those occasions. Then my next year is uh, Lee Morgan, volume three. This is a Japan promo from 1978. And in my last video, I was talking about how I wanted this, like this is one of the records that I wanted for the year. And I ended up getting this, I followed through with it. And it's a, it's an amazing copy. It's, it's near mint. It's kind of different than the other Japan pressings that I've seen. This one, I don't know if it's because it's a promo, but this one is kind of thicker. Like I, I don't know what gram this is. Close to 180, definitely. But definitely happy with this. This is the only way I could probably get it on vinyl. I can't pay two grand for the first present. So I'm glad I got it. And a nice touch to it is that it's got the lamination still. I don't know if you can see that. So it definitely gives off the vibe of a real first pressing. All right, so my next record here is Bass on Top by Paul Chambers. And if I didn't have this, I'd have the Tone Poet. But this is another 1978 Japan pressing. And it's not 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 as thick, not that one's heavier than this one is. And I'm not I'm not too well versed on the um, the Japan pressings or anything like that. Anything really out of the US, I'm not too, I'm not too much of a I don't know too much about, but this is an album that I love. Kenny Burrell's on here. Dear Old Stockholm, I think is, yeah, number one on side two. Just amazing. And actually, I didn't know that uh, Stan Getz wrote that song till now, till I've seen it. But my next record here is, and I got a story for this too, but I went up to HR Records Jason from the Jazz Basement, he always talks about, he goes to HR Records and he gets these, I'm telling you, he gets some amazing stuff from there. And I went up there and I got Something Personal by Jack Wilson. I got a deal on this, it was probably $20, $30, something like that. Pretty happy with this. Glad I went up there. Definitely will be going up there more. So, and this definitely gives off vibes of like, a, um, Alice Coltrane is playing. Like, especially the first song, uh, Most Unsoulful Woman. So, pretty happy with this. His other albums don't really give off the, give off the same vibe, but this is one of my favorites, so glad I got it. Then my next record here is The Gigolo by Lee Morgan. And I actually had a, I think it was like a 78 pressing 76 pressing with the white B. I, I don't I don't know the years on those because I kind of hesitate to buy those So I got a Liberty copy here. I Think this is the first Liberty copy. There's another one with the o-ring, but this is I think the first so Really happy with this Wayne Shorter and Lee Morgan in combo. I mean you can't really ask for much more I mean I have another record in here with a uh, Wayne Shorter and Sam Rivers, which just blew me away, but I'll show that here soon, so. And actually, this is kind of interesting, but 
I seen an interview with uh, Harold Mayburn, and the interviewer asked him like, "What's your favorite record that you did with Lee Morgan?" And he said, uh, "The Gigolo," because he did it with Wayne Shorter. He met Wayne Shorter, and he really liked Wayne Shorter. So I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, who can't like? I love Wayne Shorter. I don't know who does. I mean, who doesn't? So my next record here is Johnny Griffin. And this is something that, this is like a bit of a tease for me. In my, at my local shop, he did a flip through video. And when you look at this, I mean, you see the tape around the edges, it kinda, I mean, you're thinking it's the first pressing, but it's not, it's the, the 70s United Artists pressing. So, I mean, I'm still happy with it, I mean, I can touch a first pressing. I thought it was gonna be a first pressing. I can touch it, but I can't take it home because I can't, I can't pay the price on what this would be. So I'm glad I got this. Kind of worked out in my favor. Then I got another Johnny Griffin record here. Not one I see too often, but this is Grab This. I got this for a deal too. I grabbed it right away. I think I bought it for $5. Paul Bryant's on organ on this record. I don't really know of any other records that Johnny Griffin did with an organist, but this is a definitely an amazing one. So I actually listen to this a lot, and something that surprised me is that first of all, this is mono, but the first stereo copy is a deep groove, and then this is considered the first mono copy, and it's not deep groove. So I don't know why, but. I just noticed that when I cataloged it on Discogs. So my next record here, something that I've been trying to get for a long time, like I've been holding off on it. There's a classic series for it and so many pressings, but I ended up getting a 70s United Artists pressing with the, the black text. I realized I couldn't touch a first pressing, I couldn't touch a second even third, really. So I got this for a good deal. I think I paid like $25 for this. Still got the Van Gelder stamp, so I'm pretty happy with that. And one of the saxophonists on here is George Coleman, and I've been getting into him a lot lately. Not not recently, but like six months ago, I went to uh, Texas, and I found George Coleman's RSD release in Memphis, Tennessee, actually, which is where he was born. So I thought that was pretty neat. That's definitely an underrated uh, record store day release too as well, so. I definitely look for that one too. So my next two here, they're kind of, they kind of give off the same, uh, well they, they have similar lineups, so it's kind of like, kind of the same sound, so that's why I put them next to each other, but here's Dial S for Sonny by Sonny Clark, and I found this with Johnny Griffin, the congregation. As you can see, like the, tape around the edges here and like I said this definitely like when you're looking at this through a flip through video you think it's a first pressing just because of the tape but no it's a it ends up being the 70s United Artists pressing so I mean I'm happy I got it like I said I would never have been able to take this home if it was a first pressing so and this is getting a classic series release later this year so definitely look out for that one I'm, I'm pretty sure that'll be picked up easily Oh, and something that really surprised me is Art Farmer's on here, and I think he does an amazing job. I can't really think of too many other albums that Art Farmer did with uh, Sonny Clark off the top of my head, so happy I got this one. It's a bit of a different sound. Curtis Fuller's on here. I've been getting into him as well lately. I have some other records that I, that I bought off of eBay recently, so they got Curtis Fuller. It's an amazing lineup. I'll, I'll be showing those in a YouTube video as well, but here's the next record I got. Mobley, 1568. This is a Music Matters release, mono, and this is a th this is 33. I didn't I didn't want the 45. I can't get up and just flip it over all the time. You know, I just want to relax. So I got this, and this is amazing. This is something I definitely play a lot. I've had it for a couple months now. Curtis Porter is the, he plays alto and tenor sax on this. He has an alternate name. I don't think that's his real name. I forget his name, but 
his playing is just unbeatable. This is the first time I've heard of him when I got this album. Him and Henry Lublin combination, I mean, they're just laying down amazing lines. Especially like, this is pre kind of blue. So for this to come out then, I mean, this is, I, I would probably put this in the top 10, but I know some people wouldn't, but you gotta listen to it on vinyl. And I, you probably agree with me. So my next here is Stanley Turrentine, Easy Walker. I got this at my local flea market for five dollars actually, and it's basically unplayed. This is a, I think it's a second or third press stereo. And I actually can't find the, the release on Discogs. I mean, I I can find the album. I can, just can't find the pressing with the O ring. I've asked a few people about it, but they don't know either. So maybe I should just catalog it then just make the release myself but pretty happy with that and then my next one here is Joe Henderson page one this is another one that I held off on like Maiden Voyage I held off on that one I didn't want to get the classic series so I got this and I mean if you go on eBay and look up the first pressing of this they're going into the thousands now I mean I think they were like at 600 a couple years ago. I mean, not a couple years ago, like like last year, something like that. But this is a Liberty copy. So I'm glad I got this. It has no Van Gelder stamp though. So a lot of Liberty pressings that I'm getting recently, they have no Van Gelder stamp, which I mean, I don't need it, but it's just, a, just an added specialty. So I'm glad I got this though. It sounds amazing. I, this is one that I hesitated on streaming on Spotify. I wanted to hear it for the first time. There's a lot of albums that I do that with. Maybe I shouldn't, but it just like gives me such a good feeling when I put it, when I drop the needle for the first time. So here's my next one. Doug Karn, Revelation. And I, I found this a couple months ago, probably like a month and a half ago. And this is the first pressing. This just kind of blew me away. It was kind of a blind buy, to be honest. I never, this is my first record on Black Jazz on that label. And there's a reissue series out now. I forget uh, what the name of the company is that's redoing it. But just bringing light to this label, I think there's only like 23 to 25 records that came out on here. It's just an amazing story. All these, all these guys are underrated, especially Back then, I'm sure they were underrated. Like, nobody knew who they were. I mean, now you do because you got the reissue series and, you know, it's coming back around. But Doug Cohen Revelation is just amazing. Naeem was on here that he did. Uh, what's my favorite? Um, I think God is One is probably my favorite. And, and Revelation, too. There's some other albums that he did on Black Jazz. And, of course, he's a legend. I mean, he's... He's still alive. And when I went to HR Records, they told me about how they're gonna have a little festival, something like that. And he's gonna come there on, I think June 11th. Correct me if I'm wrong. You can actually go on their Instagram page and they have a little like ad for it. And he's gonna be playing there, so. I may go to that, may not, I'm not sure. But glad I got this. Definitely need more Doug Karn in my life. The next one here is on Muse Records. This was my first pickup for uh, Muse, like on this label. So this, I think this is a second pressing. And this one kind of blew me away too as well. I kind of got this the same day with this Doug Karn Reve revelation. So both of these were kind of blind buys. I never listened to them on Spotify before then, but pretty happy with this. This is kind of like 70s, hard bop-ish. Pretty impressed to be honest. I, mean, I don't. I didn't know who Earl and Carl Grubbs were until I got this record. And uh, I should probably play this a lot more, but I, I don't to be honest. I mean, I, I like it. I just don't play it a lot. And one of the Heath brothers is on here too as well, Albert Heath. So I guess that's the only name that I knew off of there. So my next one here is Bobby Hutcherson, San Francisco. This is one I've seen talked about a lot on Instagram too, especially. And I had been wanting it for a while, maybe like a year or so. And I had lost a couple auctions, but then somebody put one up for buy it now and I, I snagged it. 
think I paid seventy dollars. And the record itself is near mint, but the jacket's kind of got some wear to it, some stain, stuff like that. I'm not really too worried about it. And I got the music in my life, so it's a first pressing stereo. Pretty happy with it too. Still got the RVG. Definitely one that I'm glad I picked up. And for some reason, I just, I may be wrong on this, but I feel like this will get a Tone Poet announcement soon. I feel like this is just perfect for a Tone Poet. And if they do, I mean, I'll, I'll get it. My next record is uh, Cecil Taylor, Conquistador. And I feel like everybody knows what I'm probably about to say, but this record is probably for me the most challenging to listen to out of all my records and i mean I, I like it but i have to prepare myself to listen to this it's a audition mono copy which i don't i haven't seen too often on ebay but it's, it's very different most of the stuff i have another record with cecil taylor on it uh it's got a uh, kenny dorham and john coltrane i'm trying to think of the name of it i think it's a uh, Hard driving jazz. There's like so many releases for that. There's like one on United Artists on the the early pressing, and then you have the one with the the gray label pressing. But I got the gray label pressing. Then my next record here is the Rump Roller by Lee Morgan, and I have a bit of a story with this. You can kind of see the stains on here. This was a I got this off an of eBay auction, and there's no P. So, I'm kind of disappointed with that. I didn't really know. I should have asked the seller, but I didn't. I mean, I still got it for a deal, but... This and another record I got, Billie Holiday, shipped to my house, and the day that they delivered it, it was pouring down rain, and the boxes got here. I went outside as the postman delivered them, and boxes were just soiled with water. I don't really even want to talk about it that much. It, it had me. It had me going off. But I mean, I got it. I'm happy with it. Especially for the amount of money I paid for it. I can't complain. Bad things happen. You can't, can't always win. My next one here is Speak No Evil by Wayne Shorter. And <laughs> I have a lot of records that I've gotten recently that I've, that I've held off on getting the classic series because... I wanted an early pressing, and this did it for me. I mean, this is a Liberty copy with no RVG stamp, so I'm pretty happy with this. I got this for a deal as well. I get lucky on eBay, I'm telling you. I got this for like 75, something like that, so I'm pretty happy with that. Then my next one here is uh, Spring by Anthony Williams, well, Tony Williams. This is a kind of a blind buy. I didn't really listen to this on Spotify too much. I mean, I heard Love Song, which is like the one that everybody listens to, but I found this on an auction and the auction went off at like one o'clock in the morning, which kind of worked to my favor probably, but stereo copy, it's Liberty. It's slightly warped, but it doesn't affect the playing. Wayne Shorter and Sam Rivers, man. I, I tell you, it's just, I wish that they, uh, would uh, restock that uh, The Contours by Sam Rivers, that tone poet. But once they do, I'll definitely get it. That's just something I really want. And the next one here is a uh, High Voltage by Hat Mobley. This is the first US stereo. And I really have been getting lucky with a lot of Hank Mobley's. I always end up getting a first pressing somehow. Like I got the Mobley's message, first pressing I got, roll call, first pressing, and then now I got the first pressing of high voltage. I mean, I won't get a Soul Station, but I'll get this. This is uh, definitely something that I don't, I don't play a lot just because of the condition. It's, it's near mint. I got it for a deal. I think I paid like $25 for it. It's a perfect lineup too. I mean, Blue Mitchell, Jackie McLean. I don't really see them together too often, but on here they just, they go off. Then my next record is uh, Woody Shaw, The Moon Train. This is my first record by Woody Shaw, 
This is on Muse Records. I think this is the first pressing too as well. And this is near mint. I'm I'm so lucky I got this. I got this for like seventy dollars. When I went up to HR Records, like ten minutes away from there, there's two record stores next to each other. I forget the name of it, but I went in there and I found this. Immediately picked it up. I know who Woody Shaw is. I've been getting into him a lot recently. This is an album with uh it's by Andrew Hill called Grassroots and the CD version. I forget who mains trumpet on the vinyl. It might be Lee Morgan, I, I can't remember. But on the CD version, there's uh, alternate takes and there's Lee Morgan takes and then there's uh, Woody Shaw takes. And after listening to that, I really decided for myself that, not that Woody Shaw is my favorite because Lee Morgan's my favorite, but Woody Shaw embodies like Freddie Hubbard, Lee Morgan, Clifford Brown. He embodies everybody, really. And I think for that, I mean, he's one of the most perfect, like, versatile trumpeters. I wish that there was more stuff by him, but you know, I know a lot of stuff is obscure, definitely. But I'm glad I got this one, so. I think Cecil McBee is on here, too, as well. Yeah, on bass, yep. I love his playing. My next one is kind of kind of similar to this Woody Shaw one, but it's Joe Henderson Live at the Lighthouse. A couple years ago when I heard of Lee Morgan Live at the Lighthouse, I knew that other artists played it live at the Lighthouse, and there's Lee Morgan Live at the Lighthouse, Joe Henderson Live at the Lighthouse, and then the other one I know of is Cannonball Adderley Live at the Lighthouse, which I have, but I don't have the jacket for it. But anyway... This really surprised me. I didn't really listen to this much on Spotify. I mean, I did, just just a few songs, like Round Midnight, Mode for Joe. On Spotify, they actually have more songs than the record it has. So, for that, maybe, I mean, there could be a, a box set. I mean, I'm not sure. Like that Lee Morgan box set, Live with the Lighthouse, but glad I got this. Still in the string, VG+. Plus. Extremely happy with it. George Cables is on here. This is where I first got introduced to George Cables too as well. Just crazy. I mean, these lineups, especially with the Woody Shaw, the Moon Train, and this, I was really introduced to some of these players. I mean, early 70s jazz, I wasn't really too uh, well versed on, so I'm learning now. So, my next one here is Elvin Jones Live, Town Hall. And this is a John Coltrane Memorial Concert, which is the main reason I got it, really. And uh, the one thing that surprised me is Chick Corea is on here. And I didn't know he played with Elvin Jones. But, and Frank Foster is on here on tenor and soprano. This is just amazing. I feel like it could have been done better. The vinyl's really thin, like Dynaflex almost. Uh, it's on PM Records. I think I got this for a deal, probably like $5. It's not, it's not too pricey anyway, so. At first I thought it was an unofficial release, but it's not. My next here is, well my next two, they're kind of beat up, but I think we all know that Blue Note plays uh, really well, even if they are beat up. New Perspective by Donald Byrd, one of my favorite trumpeters behind Lee Morgan. And this is a first copy mono, and like I said, it's beat up. I mean, you can see the jacket's kind of stained and it's kind of tore at the top on the seam. But I'd say the record's probably like G plus bordering VG. Still plays well. I think it's still got the P. I, no, it actually doesn't have the P. Still got the RVG stamp. Mm. It's not something that I play a lot. There's a, there was a skip on this and I, I actually fixed it. Every time I, I'm faced with a skip on a record, I always, somehow I fix it. I don't know how, I just got, I got so used to doing that. And my next one here is The Hulk Flies High by Coleman Hawkins. And this is something that is just kind of a blind buy. I mean, I, I love Coleman Hawkins, especially, especially the stuff like Billie Holiday-ish stuff. But this is kind of beat up and jacket's really stained. But the record's probably BG, it still plays well, I mean, Original white label on Riverside. 
so I was really happy to find this at my local shop. It was in like, you know, the bins that you, like the bargain bins you get for five dollars, so I got this. Pretty happy with it. And then my next three, it's all Dexter Gordon, so. I, somehow I find myself just getting Dexter Gordon records, like, unexpectedly. So my first one here is Swing and Affair, first U.S. stereo copy. So I was really happy to get this. I think I got this for a deal, $75. So Sonny Clark's on here, and the song Until the Real Thing Comes Along, I don't know how many times I dropped the needle on this. Not to the point where I damaged the record, but his hit the intro to that is just so crazy. I mean, Sonny Clark. I, I, I can't remember when this album released. It may have been... Uh, after he passed away, because he passed away in 1963. But he's probably one of my favorite pianists uh, with uh, Mal Waldron, so. And the next one here is Go by Dexter Gordon, and Sonny Clark's on here too as well. So, this is a Liberty copy, Liberty jacket, Liberty vinyl, just the, the New York, USA labels. So I was really happy to get this, got this for a deal too as well. I can't get the first copy, so this is like a, I don't know, third, fourth, something like that. So my next one is Doing All Right by Dexter Gordon. I got this for a deal. This is a stereo copy, second pressing. So it's just, this was, the first pressing was on the conversion, on the transition label. This is the Blue Note Inc., New York, USA, and... The other side is the same thing, so it's a second pressing. And I see a lot of the mono copies going for like a thousand or two thousand dollars on eBay. And I just can't understand why, because the stereo copy is like I think it's like 150, but glad I got it. I mean I can't pay the two grand for the US mono, so I don't know who would. I don't know if. I mean, I could have all the money in the world and just still get that one. And my next one here is Thelonious Monk, Volume 2. Not the 10 inch. This is the one with the extra songs. So I got this kind of a, for a deal. And uh, this is really an addicting release by Thelonious Monk. He's got. One of my favorite songs on here is. Corning In and then Let's Cool One. Corning in, I've probably played over a hundred times. Not on vinyl, of course, because I'm not gonna damage the record. But this album is just so addicting. And then I, I really have been, probably honestly, the past three years, like since I started collecting, I wanted volume one, like a 10 inch on Lexington. I wanted that so bad, but I can't win them. I've, I don't know how many eBay auctions I've lost trying to get that. But anyway, here's my next one. The Latin Jazz Quintet plus Eric Dolphy. And this was at my local shop. I saw this in a flip through video. I thought it was the first pressing, so I immediately, you know, I wanted to get it. But it's the second pressing on the Trident label. So it's VG plus. I don't, I'm not too familiar with this lineup. I think, I know who Gene Casey is. I've, I've heard of his name. But I mean, of course, Eric Dolphy is really the main attraction on here. And this isn't one I see talked about a lot. I mean, this is his first. I don't. I mean, I don't know if he did any other Sideman records. I think this is his first one that he did. He really came out of the woodworks with. So glad I got that. Then my next one here is one that not many people talk about. I was debating on putting this in with my Tunes Tag 2022 video, but this is uh, Terry Gibbs. I don't know how to pronounce the name, but my way. And I don't know, you may already know who uh, plays piano on this. This is a, the first pressing came out on Deep Groove. This is a, just a regular. This is like a second pressing, something like that. So, but the pianist on here is Alice McLeod, or Alice, yeah, Alice McLeod. I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but as you can guess, that's uh, Alice Coltrane. And this isn't the first record that uh, she was on. She, there's another one that she did with Terry Gibbs on the Time Records label. 
and I think that one was like the Jewish, uh, the Jewish favorites or something like that. But uh, somebody at my local shop told me about this because I was talking about uh, her records, and he told me about this, and I didn't know. So I ended up buying it. It's pretty cheap. It's like six dollars. And it's really good too. I mean, you can you can hear her playing. It's not like you, she's not like hearable. So definitely pick this up. I mean, I don't know what will happen to the price on this. There's not many of them out there either. So just glad I got one. Then my next one here is Mingus Aum by Charles Mingus. This is a first U.S. mono copy. I got real lucky. I don't know how, but it's near mint. Extremely happy with it. Charles Mingus isn't one of my favorites. I mean, I, I like him, but isn't one of my favorite bassists. I mean, bassists. But this de this album is definitely uh, one of my favorites. So, just glad I got it. Then my next one here is what? Well, it's the last of my my recent finds. So. And I've kind of got this video up to half an hour now, so I'll be finishing it here. So this is Pharaoh Sanders' Journey to the One, and I kind this is kind of a blind buy too as well, but I'm glad I got it. Price has been going up a lot lately. I'd like to see a honestly, I'd like to see a 45 RPM reissue of this, but I don't know if that'll happen. Just glad I got this though, so. He's got a few songs on here that are synonymous to Coltrane, like India. I think, uh, what's the other one? Is it not gonna be on the back? Yeah, it's not gonna be on the back. A song that he did on ballads, too. I, I can't remember. Easy to remember, yeah, easy to remember. He, Which is on Coltrane's ballads record, so. Glad I found this. Got that for a bit of a deal, too. So I figured to end off the video, I want to show these. These are uh, not really finds because they're new releases, but I picked this up. As soon as they announced this, I picked this up. This is the 60th, 60th anniversary of My Favorite Things release, which released a couple days ago. And it came with mono and stereo. And I know most people were worried about the fact that this was going to be a digital transfer. But it's not. It's from the. It's from the tapes. So definitely pick this up now that. Uh, now that this is out. I love this. I got a. I I forget the what they call those. It's like the seventies. Late sixties uh, Atlantic labels. So I got one of those. But I'm glad I got this now. So. And then the next one I got, is Ornette Coleman. This box set is just amazing. And the presentation on, especially for craft recordings, they do everything just so well, especially lately. I was very impressed with this. It's got a, I don't know if you can see that, like a letter. I think Nat is uh, Ornette Coleman's son. I think he actually appeared on uh, one record on Blue Note. But this is just amazing. And these are just always done so well. Something else, and then tomorrow is the question too. It's my it's kind of snug going into this. But I can't remember if there was lamination on uh, on these jackets originally or not. But these are stereo copies, and they look amazing. I mean. I haven't played them too much just because the fact that you got to pull them out of the um, the box, like I don't really want to damage it too much, but I I have played these, so this is definitely one to pick up. I know it's so. Uh, I've heard some people tell me that it's a little bit uh pricey, but I think it's definitely worth it, and uh, especially for the presentation, the box, and everything. Here's a here's a little booklet, and it and there's a little quote underneath of it says, I would like to play with a group in which everyone has freedom of expression of his own, where we can blend into one particular sound. Amazing quote. 
here's a little booklet. So definitely, definitely pick this up if, if you're questioning. And then with the, the John Coltrane 60th anniversary too as well, there's a little booklet in there too. And there's some pictures that I hadn't seen before. So I was, I was pretty happy to, pretty happy to get that. Go through, but that's my first recent finds video. I realized I probably did a lot more than I should have, but uh, now that I know that my times, like how much is going up to, now I'll be able to like curate it a lot easier. So, thanks for watching.